Y'all, it's on like Donkey Kong. I can't even give you little, little quick snaps to intro this video because episode three ish literally hits the fan. What's good? It's your good sis Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Bel Air video. In this video, we're talking about episode three, and without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right on into it. Well, actually, before I jump all into it, let's talk about Jeffrey real quick because I want to be 100% honest. I have done Jeffrey's character complete and utter disservice in my episode one and episode two reviews. You can check those out. They're both on the channel right now so go back and look at those if you haven't already or if you're new here hit the subscribe button turn your bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of my other videos but I did not mention Jeffrey in the previous two videos and I meant to I'm so sorry that I did not because Jeffrey is another very interesting character which is a little bit of a twist on the original character he is the confidant of Uncle Phil we saw him really step up into that confidant role in episode two we get a little bit in episode one where he's kind of diffusing a little ghetto tension that's coming with Will coming into their new little uppity you know setup or whatever in their house and he's really playing buffer but I absolutely love how Jeffrey interjected in episode two to really turn Uncle Phil's mind around and reposition Will for him he he reminded him that he needed to meet Will where he's at and that Will is actually trying and that he needed to not completely write him off and I'm just like okay so Jeffrey is giving more than butler steez he's giving life coaching he's giving I got it together he's giving young and fine Brit he's giving a little Jamaican making flavor and we are totally here for it it's definitely feels like this version of jeffrey is uncle phil's best friend and while the you know original jeffrey was definitely a trusted confidant of the family he was not as familial as we see in this series like in this series we're seeing jeffrey play pool with him just sit and talk and drink with him we don't even see jeffrey cleaning up anything like the only little butler things i saw him do was in the very first episode him take will's bags to his room other than that we literally just see jeffrey walk Walking around observing things kind of playing buffer and then giving uncle phil advice and you know what we love that for you king we really love that for you so i wanted to take a moment at the start of this video to really make sure i go back and try to make amends for my lack of conversation around jeffrey in episodes one and two because he was definitely there he was definitely present but i was so focused on the coonery and all of the other stuff befallen will <laughs> that i completely like spaced and didn't talk about it so i did it here okay okay now let's get to the nitty gritty because episode three we got the fallout of these drugs being found in will's bag carlton knows that connor did it but it's not going to turn connor in because that's his homeboy and he riding for him so now he got to figure out another way to get will off of the hook without actually outing connor so they come up with somebody else completely taking the fall and i love the whole speech that he gave connor of like no somebody's going to find out you think you smoother than you are my mama's black bro like be clear you don't mess with a black mama and i'm like yes give me all the dialogue because we not dumb out here in these streets and while you might be able to get away with this with your little mama ashley or whoever i don't know but viv vivian ain't having it you're not about to plant no drugs on this little black boy and get away with it like it's all cool and the fact that carlton even is fine with covering it up it just continues his storyline of coonery and i absolutely hate it like i'm glad that i'm actually enjoying watching the series because if i wasn't carlton would have been the reason why i went ahead and turned it off like i absolutely just hate Hate, hate seeing black bodies in elite spaces operate as the oppressor like I just it just really gets into my skin it makes my blood boil it makes me want to fight so to avoid that I try my best not to consume things like that I try my best to avoid people like that and Carlton like don't let me meet you in the alley bro don't even let me run into you on the streets because square up I'm just saying now to start the episode Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil are trying to get to the bottom of it they're questioning Carlton they know at least I feel like they believe that will didn't actually do this and they're on his side so they're going gung-ho like we're gonna figure it out they put pressure on the principal at the school like yo you didn't even watch the cameras guess what you're gonna watch them cameras you got 24 hours to do so you better figure it out because we ain't the ones and or the twos and i'm and i'm loving it come on keep giving me this energy they you know free will of his in-school suspension he's able to go back to classes as normal and then we really jump into the episode a lot of this episode was given to like other surrounding storylines as well so i love that we got more more of Hillary in this episode we get a little bit from Will like but 
but I feel like his story kind of played the background. Like we get the whole moment of him turning the jacket inside out because he's he's eating with Lisa and she accidentally spills something on him and then he got to turn his jacket inside out. And I was like, I've been waiting for it. Like he been wearing this jacket all regular and cool. Like when he gonna flip this jacket inside out? He did it in this episode. Come on, nostalgia. I'm totally here for it. Him and Carlton have their little confrontation within the library. And that's where Carlton feel, figures out like, yo, I got to do something. I got to free him or whatever. And then again, like I feel like Will's storyline takes a back seat because in this episode, we get to see Uncle Phil with his frat brothers and on Viv with her line sisters and a little bit more of like what they have going on in their world, a little peeks into their past. And Will and Carlton goes with Uncle Phil to the crawfish bowl with his frat brothers where she's actually going to be petitioned for them to like support and, and get on board with his campaign. Will actually winds up being a saving grace for Uncle Phil because while he crashes and burns because his homies, his his frat brothers think that he has turned a blind eye to them, completely forgot about them and forgot where he came from. Will creates a fun, loving environment for him to show like, yo, no, I'm still very much so an alpha. I'm still very much so about this life. I loved and I miss y'all and that's what it is. And of course, because Captain Coonery and or the midget hater is on looking and watching and just seeing Will be Will. And it's just... <sighs> You know what? I, I hope that he chokes on every last feeling and tear that cultivates in his body the moment that he see Will shine. Because we get to watch Carlton at this crawfish bowl, see Will in his element, see Will help save his father. Meanwhile, he's doing absolutely nothing, focusing on himself, trying to get an internship that he probably doesn't even deserve. And he is sick, okay? He is sick how Uncle Phil and Will are able to connect in this moment. He's sick about how Will is so charming and charismatic. He is just sick and I'm so here for it. Like I literally was cackling. Every time they cut to him and he had this little mean scowl on, I'm like, yes, all of your little 4-2 body. I hope it is just burning hot with anger and sadness because guess what? You don't deserve nice things, period. And we're gonna come back to Will and Carlton towards the end of my video, but I wanna go to the frat brothers and the, the sorority sisters. So Aunt Viv is at home entertaining her sorority sisters and she gets Hillary to cater the event and it's so interesting because Aunt Viv recognizes Hillary's talents enough to have her cater her events and they talk in menus and make your signature crab cakes with your special sauce and all of that but she doesn't seem to grasp or is not communicating how much she values Hillary's talent in the way of her actually utilizing it to propel herself forward in life and I get it so like throughout this episode we, we see a tug of war between the two of them on Viv feels like she's just kind of like just mooching off of them and not necessarily doing anything with her life she went to she did one year of college and then dropped out so she, this is the year after that year of college and she's saying in the last two years you haven't really done anything but if she's catering your events that's something sis she has a you know social media following I believe she said she has 75,000 followers you know you did get her the opportunity for this culinary magazine but she turned it down and on Viv feels a way about how that actually happens because somebody comes to the party and just like I want an apology because she just completely torpedoed the interview and then bashed us online and then they go and review it as a group and this is like well she wasn't wrong she didn't go out of her way to defame y'all or anything but she spoke her truth and it's so very true so I think on Viv is caught between a rock and a hard place and struggling with what her what she knows are like her learned behaviors and ideals and what it looks like to be a success versus Hillary charting her own path and not necessarily having very clear answers for like okay okay, if I do this, I'll make this amount of money and I will be a millionaire on my own right at this time. Like it's just, it doesn't work like that when you're a content creator and Hillary is merging up being a content creator as well as pursuing being a chef. I think the happy medium might be for her to go to culinary school. Like, I don't know why she didn't, if she dropped out of regular college, why didn't she just go to culinary college? Especially because it seems like she's super passionate about food. But by the end of this episode, they are like arguing at the game and uh, Viv is talking about how they about to cut her off and Hillary's like you know what bad cut me off which is totally completely different energy than what the original Hillary was given in the original series because Hillary believes in herself she knows that she's going to make it she knows that she's doing the best that she can right now with all the information and resources that she has and she knows that she doesn't want to compromise herself or her artistry just to so-called get ahead in this moment or capitalize on an opportunity that might not really be meant for her to, to begin with and again I absolutely love it for her like there's dialogue in this episode about you know 
know, the younger generation feeling entitled, which is why they don't acquiesce to the demands of these older institutions or older people who want them to change who they are, change how they show up in the world, shrink them their light, all to fit into this little box. And it's just like, younger people are saying, bump your box. And in all honesty, y'all, like, I feel it. My kids coming up in the world, I'm gonna be like, bump any box. Like, don't let me put you in no box. Don't let the world put you in any box. Like, go out here and do what you have to do for you, what you feel like is best for you. As long as it's not harming anybody, ain't nobody got time to be living these mediocre, rat race ass lives that make you miserable, ultimately creating a thing for you to go out in the world and make other people miserable because you're miserable. Like, if we all just pursued the things that made us happy and did more things that really spoke to our soul and aligned with the light that we have inside, the world will be such a better place. Like, I'm about to get off my soapbox, but I really believe that if more people in the world were happier, then we wouldn't have such a trash ass world, you know? So Hillary, I'm with you, sis, do you? And all Viv gonna have to get there. You're gonna have to teach her and I 100% am here for you standing up for yourself and being like, okay, cool. You wanna cut me off? Cut me off because I'm about to make this thing shake, period. I'm stylish, I'm smart, I'm ambitious, I'm super talented. Like, look at me. You ain't said nothing but a word, mama. You ain't said nothing but a word. Now again, over at the frat brothers, <laughs> Uncle Phil gotta deal with his frat looking at him like he has kind of forgotten about them and lost his way. I guess this these scenes, I guess, help humanize him for me, but I'm still not necessarily feeling him. Like now that he is starting to get on Will's team and understand Will better, I guess we have Jeffrey to thank for that. Now he's not on my list. Just Carlton is on my list. But I understood. Like I understood what his frat brothers were saying. Like don't come around when you need us. Like be around all the time so that when you need us, it's already a no brainer. Now at the end of the episode, Carlton is struggling. Nobody's at his game. They were supposed to be splitting up the game, right? They were going to go see Will and then coming to see Carlton. However, Will, Will's game gets close. He doesn't start to begin with, but he's the one who ultimately turns the whole game around and they have to stay because, you know, it literally becomes like a close thing. And this is a very huge moment for him. And he's putting on an amazing show, not to mention Hillary and Viv are going back and forth <laughs> in the stands at the same time. Now, Carlton needs to be glad that they didn't come to the game because all they were gonna do is see him be overly aggressive, knock somebody over the head and then get put out the whole entire game, which make, which allows for him to go back to the, the locker room, snort some more, and then hear all of the roaring for Will because he hits this bucket winning shot and he's right there to catch it. And then that is just gonna solidify his hate and disdain for Will even more. And it's just like, boy, you're just not it. Like the girls that get it, get it. The girls that don't, don't. And you ain't that girl. Like I really wish that people could just be okay with who they are or channel whatever jealousy and envy that you have to make yourself better versus trying to tear somebody down. Like watching this little minion Kunko kid like spiral mentally as he watches everybody lift Will up in triumph and he sees his parents over there in the stands and Hillary over there in the stands and Lisa over there in the stands and he's just like oh this is it you just know like he's giving Unabomber vibes and I'm just like <sighs> Or you can just try to get clean and be a better person. And that that will probably put you in a run and to be a solid individual, you know? Like you could do that, but no, we're probably gonna default to go do some other goofy shit that's gonna try to ruin Will's life. <sighs> But yeah, y'all, that is my episode three full breakdown. Let me know how y'all are feeling about the series so far. I am definitely like more and more in love with it now after seeing three episodes. I'm getting my bearings in the world. I think that the pacing is really great. Like while I felt like episode one, the pacing was off, the, the pacing has been so much better. I think seeing the balance that has to happen with Aunt Viv, Uncle Phil and Will, and then Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil with Carlton and them like coming to a clear understanding of like where Carlton is actually at on this journey and how much of a menace he is that has to come sooner rather than later because clearly all of these coincidences of will getting in trouble literally go back to him we also oh before i actually end this video i do want to talk about carlton and lisa they have a conversation in this episode and he like comes to like her little pregame ritual which is like a food truck that she likes to eat at and we get to see him be a little bit more vulnerable and i'm like okay girl this is i guess who you were dating before but he's still giving trifling and it's interesting because he still kind of like blames her like he apologizes for how he's been acting but then he also kind of still shifts blame indirectly onto her about like what's happening with will and her interest in will and i don't think that anything that she said like i do believe that she does still care about carlton we learn in this episode like oh he was there for her when her mother passed and she was there for him when he was going through this whole anxiety bout last year which has clearly trickled over to this year and why he is snorting what he say is xanax but i'm gonna keep calling it coke 
So clearly they've been with each other or they've been around each other or been there for each other during their hardest times in life, which is okay, cool. That makes sense. But he still feels like he's placing the blame on other people. And it's just like, no, she don't want to be with you because of you. Like you have a problem, bro. You're manipulative. You're raggedy. Like you have a problem. And I think it's it just as important to note that. I cannot wait for Will and Lisa to get together, get together because they are giving me all of the relationship goals that I need. And I'm excited for these little teen love. This is a ship that I could definitely get on board with. So yeah. Oh, last, last, last thing. Why are you supposed to be a drug kingpin in West Philly on Instagram stalking a teenager who was moved to LA and now you gonna get a ticket and fly out here to be a menace? I can't. That's where they leave off at y'all. So episode four, we're gonna see what Rashad got cooking up, how he gonna try to come to LA to ruin Will's life because he's figured out where Will is. It's also giving raggedy and I hate that for you. Like I really wish you would just walk into your kingdom, but if you're gonna be trash, I'm definitely gonna drag you. All right, y'all, let me know what you think of the episode in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of my Bel Air content. And I will see you in the next one.